On today's Daz full scene setup, I'm going to do an Egyptian tomb mummy scene. So if this is your first time here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and maybe the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. I do about three tutorials a week, including one full scene setup like I'm going to be doing today. And be sure to check out the description below where I've listed all of the relevant products that I'm using in the video today. And you can also find some ways to support me either for free or monetarily. So be sure to check that out before you go. And with that, we are going to jump right into our scene. So as I said, we're going to do kind of an Egyptian uh, tomb and mummy scene. Um, this is partially inspired by like the classic, you know, mummy movies, as well as we're going to have a little bit of kind of a Tomb Raider, uh, Lara, Lara Croft flair uh, thrown into it. So um, I'm using a great uh, mummy, uh, Egyptian mummy set um, that, again, I'll, I'll, I'll link to that in the description below if you want to check it out, that comes with most of the relevant uh, props. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in my Egyptian tomb scene. I'll give that a moment to load in. There we go, and I'm going to go ahead and switch to texture shaded view. There we go, and I'm going to go ahead and drop in our two models that we're going to use. I'm going to use a mummy, and then I'm going to do like a female action star. Again, kind of like a, a Lara Croft Tomb Raider vibe. So I already know the figure that I'm going to use. I'm going to use Amira. So I'm just going to type that in directly. Amira is one of my favorite female figures to use, uh, especially if I'm going for like a kind of an athletic fin uh, figure. She's very slender athletic, looks very good with short hairdos. So I'm going to go ahead and get her dropped in. All right, and she is now in the scene, but we can't see her because this scene is actually elevated. So she's kind of hidden in the floor right now, but I can see her uh, uh, her uh, translation arrows there. So I'm just going to drag her up till she's in scene. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and get her hair and her texture set. Uh, if you need to know how to do this, be sure to check out my earlier tutorial on how to set up a character because I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. All right, so I've got all of my materials applied, and next I'm gonna do her wardrobe, which, like I said, I'm gonna go for kind of a Lara Croft vibe, and I've already got a great outfit picked out for this one, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop that in. There we go, and the outfit I'm using is called Urban Action. There we go, and I'm gonna go ahead and get her moved out of the way roughly um, where I'm gonna have her placed. Let me switch to perspective view. There we go, I'm not gonna do her pose just yet, but I'm gonna get her placed about where I want her. She's gonna be kind of up on this uh, ledge. There we go, and she's going to be facing in towards the sarcophagus. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this mummy and the sarcophagus. I don't think that's going to be in our final shot, but I'm going to delete that anyway. That might actually make things move a little bit faster. And I'm going to go ahead and put in our mummy character. There we go, and I'm using mummy HD, so we'll go ahead and get him dropped in. All right, and again, he is down into the floor, so I'm going to go ahead and bring him out. So the next thing I'm going to do is get my figures posed about where I want them. And I'll go ahead and do the mummy first since I've already got him selected. And I'm going to go through my poses and I'm going to look for a good action pose. I've already got one picked out, I just need to find it. There we go. This was originally made for a werewolf character, but we're going to kind of repurpose that for our mummy. And uh, okay, let's go ahead and place him kind of with one foot in the sarcophagus. Let's rotate him around. And raise him up a little bit. There goes a little bit of collision right now with the sarcophagus, but I don't think you'll be able to tell. Actually, let me bend his uh, leg down. There we go. And I'm going to have him kind of looking up at our Amira character. So we're going to twist his head and then the upper neck when we hit the limit on that. And then the lower neck. And we're going to bend that head down there we go and try to get the upper body a little bit more twist there we go so he's kind of looking up at our character there we go I think that'll do pretty nicely we're going to move her over maybe just a little bit There we go, so it looks like he's kind of stepping out of the sarcophagus. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pick out a pose for our Amira character. For her, we're gonna do an action pose. 
There we go. So we're going to pose her like she's kind of kind of poised and, and ready for action. So she's kind of reacting to the zombie coming out of the sarcophagus. And I think I'm just going to do either a side shot or an over-the-shoulder shot. I may do a couple. I'm not sure just yet. But I'm going to go ahead and give each of them a facial expression. There we go. Yeah, screaming at the mummy. All right. And then for our mummy, we're going to kind of look for him. It's kind of like a snarl or something similar. There we go. I like that one. That is great. Okay, so I've got my figures posed. Next, we're going to get into the lighting. Uh, let me go ahead and go into eye ray view, and I'll give you an idea of what this one looks like. So this scene already comes with a lot of cameras, as you can see, um, as well as lighting already done. Um, and some scenes that you buy will have all of this stuff included already. That can be really good if you need to throw together a scene in a hurry. However, I generally like to use my own lighting, which is what I'm going to do for this one, since I've got the extra time. And this one is way too well lit for my taste. Let me go ahead and go to eye ray view and show you what the uh, what the default lighting looks like. There we go. So the lighting is pretty good and not exactly what I'm going for though. I want something a lot moodier and kind of creepier and a, definitely a whole lot darker. So there are a couple of different ways that we can uh, that we can reset the lighting. One of them is by using render settings. Um, so if we go under the render settings tab to environment, right now the environment mode is listed as dome and scene. If I go to dome only, that is basically going to remove all of the scene lights uh, from our from our scene, which darkens everything dramatically. Then we can go in and add our own lights hypothetically. However, since that removes all the scene lights, any scene lights that we add aren't going to work. They aren't going to show up. So I'm going to go ahead and leave on dome and scene, and instead I'm going to delete the lights manually by going down to the lights tab. And right here we have two ambient lights. We have ambient overhead back and ambient overhead front. You could potentially go in and tweak those. Um, I'm not going to do that though. I'm going to go ahead and delete them and just start over. So I'm just going to click the first one and hit the delete key and then overhead front and also hit the delete key. And what I'm going to do is light this with a primitive. So I'm going to go back to texture shaded view and I'm going to go ahead and create my camera as well. There are all sorts of cameras created but again they have their own settings and I'd rather start from scratch. So I'm going to create a new camera and call it new camera. I'm not going to bother deleting all the other cameras. I'm just going to ignore those from now. Um, there we go. All right, let's get that placed about where I want it. Excellent. All right, let's go back to perspective view. And now I'm going to get my lighting plane in place. So again, uh, if you don't know how to do this, check out my video on using a primitive as a lighting source, because uh, I'm going to rush through this part pretty quickly. All right, there we go. I've got my lighting plate in, plane in there, which is going to create our ambient light. So let me go ahead and go back to my new camera, and let's go to eye ray view and see how see how that looks. There we go. It doesn't look like much yet because I've got my illumination turned way down. So uh, two things I'm going to do. Uh, one thing I'm going to do rather before I bump my illumination up is I'm going to change my emission color to just kind of yellowish, just to give it kind of a, a golden glow to it. There we go, and then I'm going to start bumping up my uh, lumens until I get it where I want it. So let's go to luminance, and I'm just going to start bumping that up. And basically the way that I do this is I just bump it up you know, a few units at a time until I start getting the kind of look that I want. There we go. Right now I'm going up about 10,000 units at a time. Sometimes you have to bump it up quite a bit to get it as well lit as you want. I think I'm going to stop at about 40,000. Yeah, let's hold it there for right now. I can always go back and bump it up more later, but we're still not done with our lighting just yet. So two things I'm going to do. One thing is I'm going to create a god ray on our uh, mummy so it looks like he's kind of lit by a sunbeam. Um, and I did do a God Race tutorial, so be sure to go that put back and check that one out if you haven't seen it. Um, but let's go ahead and get started on that. 
All right, so here we are with our god rays. I'm just gonna do a short one for now. So I'm gonna start with short filter sunlight prop two. So we're gonna double click that to drop it in. And go ahead and go back to perspective view and texture shaded, make this a little bit quicker. All right, and we're going to move that back a little bit and kind of angle it down uh, Towards our uh, towards our mummy character. But yeah, when you're positioning it, be sure you select the parent node. Uh, that's the only way that you can adjust the positioning. There we go. So we're gonna angle it down, and then we're gonna move that back a little, and we're also going to make that larger. There we go, that's kind of what we're looking for. All right, let me go back to, oops, there we go. Let me go back to my camera and we're gonna start applying our settings to that. So we're gonna select the child node prop as we put our um, styles on it. And this one I might play around with it a little bit, um, but we're gonna try self illuminated first. You can select these presets up here um, and actually, I'm going to start with that. Let's try the third one. We'll see how that looks. Again, we can go back and change these later. Apply effects. I'm going to do no effects at first. And then for dust, I'm going to try dust level two because this is a dusty old crypt. There we go. Now we're starting to see that effect. All right, let's go to eye ray view and check that out so far. There we go. That's loading in kind of slowly now as the scene is getting more complex, but that is kind of what I was going for, though. That's, that's a pretty cool look so far. Uh, we aren't quite done with it yet. I may adjust the placement on that light. Actually, let's go ahead and do that to make it a little bit more on our mummy character. Because right now, like, we're, yeah, the kind of floor is a little bit too illuminated, so we're going to bump that back a little bit. There we go, and I'm just going to use the X translate to move that back some. There we go, that's that's what I like. All right, let's check that out one more time. There we go. That's a little better, and those dust particles uh, in the uh, light diffusion that give it you know, kind of a little bit more of a mystical effect, which I like a whole lot. It's also creating a really nice glow on our uh, mummy on his head and his right arm, which we're actually about to accentuate, and that is probably going to be the last part of our lighting setup is we're going to create a backlight for uh, for each of our figures the mummy as well as our Amira figure so let's go ahead and do that um, I'm going to create two spotlights I'm going to create an Amira backlight and I'm also going to create a mummy backlight All right, and let's go ahead and get those in place. I'm gonna switch back to texture shaded view. And we're gonna start with our Amira backlight. So we're gonna do both of these to the rear and relatively high above our characters to illuminate their backs. There we go. All right, now let's get our mummy backlight placed. So we're gonna create a little bit of extra dramatic lighting for him. And this, if you've seen my three-point lighting tutorial, this is basically going to, you know, create that halo effect, uh, or more so um, than what even our uh, god rays are doing, because it's getting kind of a little bit of a backlight a halo effect already. There we go. So we're going to do this one on the opposite side, up and to his left a little bit. All right, let's go back to actually let's do our camera view, and uh, now we're going to get the parameters set on our lights. So let's go to lights. We'll do the Amira backlight first. And we're gonna kind of simulate the light coming off of these uh, torches. So I'm gonna shift it pretty far into the orange red spectrum. And I'm also going to bump the temperature down to about 5,000, which is also gonna make it a little bit redder. You can already see that reflected in the, uh, in the uh, preview there, the texture shaded preview. Let's go ahead and bump that into IRA and see what that looks like. There we go, so you can already see a little bit of that orange glow. So I'm gonna start bumping up the lumens on that. This one will probably have to be a lot more gentle uh, than I was with the uh, primitive light. Yeah, bump that up a little bit and you can already see a pretty dramatic change. Let's go up a little bit more. 
There we go. Maybe just a little bit more. Let's go to about, where is that, 16,000? Yeah. Now let's make that 20,000. There we go. And I'm also going to raise that light just a little bit. Let's point it a little bit more at the back of her head, like right at the back of her neck. There we go. And we'll check that one out. There we go. That's a lot better. It creates a subtle but definitely a noticeable effect there. Uh, I guess that nice uh, firelight effect. All right, let's go ahead and... Um, Oh, actually, we need to fix our other parameters. We're going to change this to disk geometry. Again, be sure to check my three-point lighting tutorial where I go into more depth about what all of these settings mean. But for now, I'm just going to put in my standard settings for uh, this one. There we go. All right, and let's go ahead and set the parameters for our mummy backlight. All right, and this one, we're not going to do quite as red. It's going to be a little bit more yellow, kind of give him more of a glow. Uh, like a sunlight kind of a glow. So what I'm trying to simulate is like there's an open spot where the sunlight is kind of pouring down and illuminating the mummy and the dust. So again, we're going to give him more of a yellowish glow and start bumping up our lumens on that one. Put it up to about the same level. It's almost 20,000. There we go. And that's already starting to create a nice glow around our character. I'm going to let that preview render for a moment. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that one so far. I believe that's going to do it. Um, the only thing that I might do is to uh, mess with the tone mapping a little bit. So I'm going to bring the shutter speed down to about 110. There we go, just to make those shadows come out a little bit more. Uh, speaking of the shadows, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the Crush Blacks level. And again, I've done a video on um, tone mapping and what all these controls mean. Be sure to check that out for a little bit better discussion on all of these. But uh, let's go ahead and hit the render button on that just so I can see what the final product looks like. And if I need to, I can come back and tweak a couple of things. But I think I'm going to like how this one looks, though. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and set this one to render at 1080p. That's full HD, and I may try a higher quality, like a 4K render, but we're going to do this one to see what it looks like. So I'm going to hit the render button on that, and we will check back in a few minutes. And here we are with our finished render. So a couple of things to notice. Uh, first of all, the lighting primitive plane at the top creates nice even lighting throughout the whole scene. I also did that one nice and large, so we get a good even coverage. Um, the god rays coming down give a neat kind of sparkly effect, especially with the uh, extra dust particles that we put in. And they've got a really nice glow kind of a, a reflection off the sarcophagus. And then the backlights, of course, give the impression of the, uh, the torchlight coming on the back of our Amira figure, um, as well as a little bit more of a yellowish glow coming off of our uh, mummy character, which kind of matches that glow coming from the, uh, coming from the god rays there. Um, and that will about do us for this one. So remember to check the description below for some ways that you can support me and my work. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't. I come out with tutorials about three times a week. That's what I try to do. I've been keeping up with that pretty well. Um, and also look for all of these uh, products linked in the description below as well. And that will do it for this one. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Goodbye.